In this problem, we have a solid semicircular hemisphere on top of a hollow cylinder. We're told the object has constant density and a mass of five slugs. Remember, slugs are the mass in the US standard system or imperial system, and pounds are force. We're given dimensions and asked to determine the mass moment of inertia about the z-axis and then about the y-axis for this combined object or composite object. Just recall that an object only has one centroid and one center of gravity, but it might have multiple expressions for mass moment of inertia because it depends which axis we're rotating about when we determine mass moment of inertia. So mass moment of inertia has units of either kilograms meters squared or slugs feet squared. If you have a mass moment of inertia expressed as pounds feet squared, you're going to need to divide by g to convert it into slug feet squared. So we have a distance of 3 inches. We need to express it in feet because those are our units. So that's 0 0.25 feet and we'll call that h. We'll call this outer diameter d2 and that's going to be equal to 0 0.25 feet and our inner diameter d3 is 0 0.17 feet. We have three volumes that we're going to talk about. V1 is the volume of the hemisphere. V2 is the volume of a solid cylinder with the diameter D2. And then V3 is the volume of a solid cylinder with the diameter D3. So what we're going to eventually do is subtract a solid cylinder volume V3 from a solid cylinder volume V2 to get our result. So we're going to set it up like these are three separate objects. So the first thing we want to do is find the density. That will get us to find the masses of each object. So we're going to have an expression that says the total mass is the mass of object one, the hemisphere, let's draw that a little better, plus the mass of object two, which is a solid cylinder, minus the mass of object three, which is a solid cylinder the size of the whole. So we're going to write what an expression for each of these masses. So the mass of object one is going to be rho times V1 equals rho times two thirds pi R1 cubed. And that's straight out of our tables. And we can say R1 is actually going to be equal to the radius of the cylinder two, and that's going to be d2 divided by two, or 0 0.125 feet. Mass two is going to be rho times v2 equals rho pi r2 squared h. And we already have an expression for R2. It's the same as R1. And then mass of 3 is going to be rho V3 equals rho pi R3 squared times H, where R3 equals D3 over 2 equals 0 0.083 feet. So we can write that the total mass equals rho two thirds pi r2, remember r1 and r2 are the same, cubed, plus rho pi r2 squared h minus rho pi r3 squared h. 
So we're going to try and rearrange this to solve for rho. So we'll have mass over pi equals rho times 2 thirds r2 cubed plus r2 squared h minus r3 squared h. And if we plug in our numbers, that becomes m over pi equals rho times 0.003486 feet cubed. And that gives us a density rho of 456.8 slugs per foot cubed. So using that row, we can find our masses. We find that M1 equals 1.87 slugs. M2 equals 5.60 slugs. And M3 equals 2.47 slugs. So all we've done is plug row in to these expressions for M1, M2, and M3 after solving for it. And we find the individual masses of those three objects. If you want to do a little check that your math is right, then 1.87 plus 5.6 minus 2.47 should equal five slugs, and it does. So that isn't an uh, entire confirmation you've got it right, but you can check at least one part of your math. Okay, so now we have the masses and dimensions of each object. So we can start to find our mass moment of inertia. So we'll start with IZZ. So we have this object about the z-axis. Is going to be the mass moment of inertia of the first object, the hemisphere, about the z-axis, plus the mass moment of inertia of the large cylinder about the z-axis minus the mass moment of inertia of a solid cylinder the size of the hole about the z-axis. So because we have expressions in our tables for the, cylin the cylinders and the hemispheres about the axis that we want, we can simply write them out and sum them. So I Z Z for the whole body is going to be equal to two fifths M one R one squared. And remember that's R two squared because they have the same radius plus one half M two R two squared minus one half M three R three squared. Those are straight out of the tables. And if we put the numbers in, we've got the numbers for the radius, we've got the numbers for the masses. That gives us IZZ equals 0 0.0470 slug feet squared. All right, we also asked to find IYY. This is going to be a little bit more complicated because our expressions that are in our tables don't necessarily express it about the y-axis as shown. Let's just look at that. So the y-axis is at the bottom of the cylinder here. We can think of this point as point O, the origin of our axes. And so we're going to have to find an expression for each of those composite bodies, each of those separate bodies, about point O, and then sum them together. So here we go. Our whole object, I'm just gonna draw it from the side. 
about point O, about the y-axis, we're going to have, we have an expression for the hemisphere about G. We know that the distance from G to the bottom is going to be 3 eighths R1. And then we know the distance from the bottom to O is going to be H, the height of the cylinder. So we can write the expression IYY for the hemisphere about its center of gravity is 0 0.259 M1 R2 squared. Remember R1 equals R2. And so IYY about O, so that's about G, about O. So we've got that hemisphere uh, but about the point O is going to be IYYG plus M1 3 over 8 R, R2 plus H all squared. And this is just parallel axis. So now we have an expression for the mass moment of inertia of the hemisphere about point O. Now we need to do our two other objects. So we have the large cylinder. The tables give an expression about point G. And we need to find it about point O. The distance between point G and point O is H over 2. So we can write I, Y, Y about G for the large cylinder is going to be equal to 1 twelfth m2 3r squared r2 squared plus h squared. So that's straight out of our tables. And then i y y about o for the large cylinder is going to be i y y g plus m2 times the distance between those two points h over 2 all squared. And that's again parallel axis theorem. And then we have one more similar to the second one. We have g here. We have o here. We know the distance between g and o is h over 2. i y y g for the littler cylinder is going to be 1 12th m3 3r3 squared plus h squared and iyyo for the smaller cylinder is going to be iyyg plus m3 h over 2 squared. So now we've got expressions for each of these objects the mass moment of inertia about the y-axis at O. And now we just have to sum them up the correct way. So I, Y, Y, O for the total object is going to be I, Y, Y, O for that uh, semi-circular hemisphere plus I, Y, Y, O for the large cylinder minus, remember we're subtracting that smaller cylinder, I, Y, Y, O for the smaller cylinder. And if we put in these three expressions, here, here, and here, and the numbers that we have, we end up with I, Y, Y, O is going to be 0 0.255 slug feet squared. Now this is a lot larger, in fact, than IZZ. The main reason for this is that the z-axis is passing through the centers of gravity of all three objects. So in about that z-axis, that's the minimum mass moment of inertia we can have to rotate that object. Whereas the y-axis does not pass through the centers of gravity of the objects. 
In fact, it's quite far away, so we could expect that it would be much harder to turn this object about the y-axis through O than about the z-axis that passes through the G of each object. Thanks for watching this video. Find more videos and material at Mechanics Map.